Hi everyone, today I'll be discussing the first black woman to represent Canada in international sports, Mrs. Barbara Howard. I'll be going over her history, her experience at the Commonwealth Games, her post career, and a little bit of what it was like for black Canadians, particularly black women at this time. So before we get going, if you like sports and history, subscribe for two videos a month. So let's get started. Now, Barbara Howard was born in 1920 in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Now, I don't have a whole biography of her entire life, but from what I was able to find, that her family had been living in this area, particularly Gastown, Vancouver, for quite some time. Her grandparents also lived in this area of Vancouver, and her family was one, if not one of the only black families living um, in that area. She often had to walk miles to um, her school. When she heard the bell, she would sprint towards the school as to not be late. That is probably what helped her become so successful when she started running for her high school, uh, Britannia High School, where she won a few track championships. And she eventually qualifies for the Canadian trials while still in high school, um, being held for the upcoming British Empire Games, later known or called the uh, Commonwealth Games. At the trials at the age of only 17, she ran 11.2 in the 100 yards, which is uh, in meters just under 100 meters. They wouldn't uh, go from yards to meters for a couple of years, but essentially think of it as the 100 meters. Um, and when she did run this 11.2 in the 100 yards, she actually beat the Commonwealth Games record. So she easily qualified to represent Canada at the upcoming 1938 Commonwealth Games in Australia and was seen as a um, gold medal uh, potential winner. Now her race actually catches the attention of Bobby Rosenfeld, who was a member of the Matchless Six. And if you don't know who they are, I'll throw a video up in the cards here. I've spoken a little bit about them, but they were a group of very successful Canadian women at the 1928 Amsterdam Olympics. Now Rosenfeld actually ran an article in the Globe and Mail newspaper called The Feminine Sports Reel, which was an article in this newspaper specifically about um, female athletes and women in sport, which was fairly progressive for this time. Um, she wrote an article about Howard before the 1938 Commonwealth Games. Now in this quote and in one that I will repeat later, I'm about to use the word dusky, um, which was a common term um, in the 1930s to refer to a colored or black person. It's how Rosenfeld identified Howard as a black Canadian. It's not a word that is used um, now for good reason and it's only a word I'll be using in the context of these two quotes from Rosenfeld's uh, news article. So Rosenfeld had said, Barbara Howard, dusky flash of Vancouver, makes it with me. Reports from the coast say she is grease lightning and her times bear out that fact. Now, as for Howard's career with her successful run at the Canadian trials, Howard was heading to Australia to represent Canada. She would become the first black female athlete to represent Canada in international sports. She would be competing in the 100 yard and the 440 yard and 660 yard relays. She would be a bit of a celebrity in Australia as there were not many black athletes who were competing at the games, nor were there a lot of black persons living in Australia. Due to her personality, probably her looks, um, and the fact that she was a uh, black person in Australia, this kind of all made her very, very well liked by the people. And fans even gave her a stuffed koala bear that remained with her um, throughout her entire life. There were even multiple articles written about her across newspapers in Australia. Now in the 100 yard dash, Howard would place sixth overall and was incredibly disappointed by her placement. It was a combination of homesickness, sickness, and being in a very foreign place, especially at such a young age. Remember, she's only 17 and still, I think, technically in high school at this point. No. Although feeling as though she failed Canada in her individual race, she helped Team Canada win a silver in the 440 yard relay and a bronze in the 660 yard relay. Rosenfeld would also write of Howard at the games. Barbara Howard, dusky sprinter from BC, caused quite a stir among Sydney's fans during her appearance at the Empire Games. She apparently was quite a novelty, appearing on the front pages of every newspaper. They seldom see colored athletes down there. The photographers and autograph see seekers kept on her trail. Barbara Howard would actually discuss her time in the Sydney Games um, later in this quote. It was exciting, but I didn't realize at the time how much of a novelty I was considered. Australia didn't allow foreigners in then, and because they saw very few black people, they thought I was pretty special. 
Howard's career was unfortunately very short-lived. In 1939, World War broke out, thus canceling the future 1940 and 1944 Olympic Games, of which she was probably going to qualify and was hoping to attend. By the time 1948 came around, Howard was past her prime, essentially, and didn't want to return to that level of sport. If she perhaps had been born a bit earlier or a bit later, who knows how fast she could have ran at these Olympic Games. Now, she remained in British Columbia and in 1959 graduated from the University of British Columbia with a teaching degree. She was later hired by the Vancouver School Board as the first visible minority to teach in its schools and would remain there for 43 years. She would also volunteer with lots of local charities um, and groups in her city, particularly teaching physical education and helping the underprivileged. Her impact was large in the area of Vancouver, that there are many places that have actually been named after her, particularly in her hometown of Gastown. In 2012, she was inducted into the British Columbia Sports Hall of Fame, and in 2015, she was inducted into the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame. She passed away in her hometown of Vancouver in 2017. Now, Howard competed for Canada in 1938, and I just wanna discuss on what will be a very surface level of what Canada was like for a woman of color around this time. So I'm gonna parallel her story with the story of Viola Desmond, who if you're Canadian, you should know her name because she is on the Canadian $10 bill. Also, please watch her Heritage Minute if you have not. It is a Canadian gold star. Now, Viola Desmond was a very successful woman living in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia, and managed her own uh, beauty school, the Desmond School of Beauty. Now, she went to watch a film at the Roseland Theater and was arrested when she refused to leave the whites-only section of said theater. She would be charged for her crime, even with large community support and various um, appeals of this charge. She, appealed. she was ne never able to get rid of this crime in her lifetime, and she actually moved um, out of Canada into the States a bit later on. It wasn't until 2010 that the federal government actually cleared her of her charges. Um, now, Viola Desmond was arrested in 1948, a whole eight years after Barbara Howard had represented Canada at the Commonwealth Games. Granted, British Columbia may have been a little different for black um, Canadians compared to life in Nova Scotia. For example, in Ontario and Nova Scotia, they, these were the only two provinces that actually racially segregated schools, and some of their last schools didn't close until 1980, which is really gross. But also around this time, in Ontario and Nova Scotia, they did have racial segregation in some public spaces like theaters, restaurants, bars, etc. Canada is not unlike the United States with their treatment of black peoples, although in some areas not as extreme as the United States. Racial segregation still happened and many Canadians saw black persons as second class citizens along with even the government at this time. It's not really until uh, 1982 that the Canadian Parliament passed the Constitution Act in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which meant to protect the rights of Canadians regardless of the color of their skin, gender, race, economic status, etc. Just because Howard and Desmond were at opposite ends of the country doesn't mean that they didn't face the same racism and prejudice from uh, white Canadians. Now, so that is the story of Barbara Howard. To be honest, I hadn't actually heard about her until I came upon um, some athletes in the Canadian Black History Month article that I read and it inspired me to look into her more to share her story as I hadn't actually heard about her before. Now, although her running career was short-lived and she didn't hold any records or doesn't necessarily have medals or a wall filled with trophies now. Her story is an important part of Canadian sport history. It goes to show that you don't need those shelves of trophies and medals in order to make uh, an impact on your community and your country. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like, and if you wanna see more videos, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.